So today is yet another day in the life of the digipreneur where, you know, so it's an interesting day because we have a, we get to wear multiple hats. I mean, by now you guys know, um, I do a few different things, right? But there are days where, you know, multiple hats have to come on throughout the day. And it's always a, it's always a fun, it's always a fun thing, right? So this morning I actually have a meeting with government. So let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can we get a nice zoom? How is that going to work? I'll get it when I'm outside, right? That's all right. I'll get it. I'll get it when I'm outside. But today I'm going to be meeting with the with one of our government arms, which is the Ministry of Public Administration. And we have some things that we got to talk about, right? And after that, after that meeting, uh, I'm going to be teaching. So I'll be actually heading out to UE Lockjack, where UE has partnered with the University of Hull. And there's going to be about 50 female entrepreneurs that are doing a, a wide variety of courses and stuff with UE Lockjack and Hall University. And I'll be coming in there to talk about digital marketing, their digital assets, strategies to market and build their brands online today. So I'm gonna do my best to take you along with me. There are gonna be things I can show, there are gonna be things I can't, but I'm gonna do my best to capture as much as I possibly can. And most definitely I will do my best to especially capture the UE Lockjack session, all right? But we're gonna head to our first meeting of the day, so come right along. So I just finished up with the government job. Well, not job, but finished up with a meeting with uh, that agency. And now we're moving on to UE Lockjack. So we're gonna be doing a training session, like I said, with about 40 to 50 women entrepreneurs. And this should be really, really fun. So we're going to capture as much as we can. All right. But yeah, let's get to it. So afternoon, everybody. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So the closer you are, the more you're the better they hear you online. All right, perfect. All right, so afternoon, everybody. So my name is Karen Rose, and I am a digital strategist. That is the main hat that I wear. I work with businesses across the region and the diaspora to help take their businesses online, how to create content, market their business, but also monetize. And also, how do we get paid from our clientele from around the world, right? Now, no problem. Now, when Ariane reached out to me about this session, she gave me a couple of topics that you guys were having challenges with. So I'm trying to incorporate as much of those things into this presentation. So we're gonna talk a bit about digital strategy. We're gonna talk about um, social media. We're gonna talk about marketing. Um, but it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more than just social media because social media, even though it's a big part of what we do, the scary part is it's only one aspect of a digital strategy, right? And many times you run into people that, I mean, many times you run into people who may be on social media, but they might only be on one social media platform, right? So, what happens on social media, social media is still very siloed. 
TikTok is TikTok. What happens on TikTok, what happens on Facebook, stays on Facebook. What happens on IG, stays on IG. But what happens when maybe your particular audience isn't there? Where else could they potentially be, all right? Now, business 101 is your business should ideally solve a problem. Can we agree on that? Yes. Your business should ideally solve a problem, right? Now, when we have a problem, doesn't matter what aspect of life, when you have a problem and you need information about said problem, where is the first place we go? We Google it, right? We Google it. Or if we need, if we need visual help, there we go. Is that social media? No. Google is not social media. Right? YouTube is not social media. YouTube is a search engine. All right? So I, I highlight that because if that's the number one place that we go for information, all right, if your business doesn't show up in a Google search, if your business is not Googleable, I know I made up that word, but <laughs> you know. If you're You took the next line out of my mouth. If I had flowers, I would have gave you a flower. <laughs> so, and what's your name? Dominique. Dominique. What Dominique said is extremely right. When your business is not Googleable, you are missing out on the number one way that everybody in the world gets their information. All right? How many of you, just show of hands, how many of you are using AI? AI tools, a chat GPT, chat Sonic. No? Lord. The sooner y'all start to just go on chat GPT and use the free version and start to mess around and watch YouTube videos, the better. Chat, chat GPT. Chat GPT, right? Chat GPT. That is going to be your best friend. Oh, my online people, you guys hear me good? Let me know in the chat. I'll periodically come over and check. All right. Chat GPT, right? Now, when it comes to chat GPT, I know only a couple people are using it, but do you guys know, for those who are using it, do you know where chat GPT gets its information from? Gets it from Google. So, by process of elimination, if ChatGPT gets all of its information on Google, and Google gets all of its information from you, the business owner, who's putting out the information, if you do not have a website or any of the other digital assets that we're gonna talk about, then you are disqualifying yourself from the number two way people are getting their information in this world right now. And as a business, the ideal thing, the ideal position you want your business to be in is you want to be the resource, the go-to place that people in your industry are coming to for all sorts and uh, source of information. So I'm going to be showing you how to transform your business into that go-to place that people are going to go for that information, right? The answer is 63%. Of all sales, according to Google, start with a Google search. Now, let me just walk you through that process and think about yourselves, right? I gave the example, my back hurts. So you wake up, you jump on Google, 37-year-old male, back hurts. Google says, congratulations, you've just won stage four cancer. I joke, right? But you know how WebMD, everything is cancer for them, right? But you Google whatever your problem is, and then you go down the rabbit hole. You describe your symptoms, or you describe what you're trying to achieve. You're in your car, you're in your car, you hear a noise, you start to Google what the noise is in your car is, or maybe you see a new icon pop up in your dashboard, and you're Googling, oh God, what is this, what is this light popping up on my dashboard, right? And then, when you Google that, the results page comes up, 
and you start to get information about your possible situation and then you just continue to go down the rabbit hole until you get to either a product that's going to solve your problem or you get to a person that is going to solve your problem and then you pick up the phone, you give them a call. In the case of Trinidad, you probably won't get through on the first time. <laughs> or the second. You might never get through. I don't know. It's, you know. <laughs> but let's just say they answer the phone. You're like, great. I have said problem. This is what's going on. The person says, great. We solved this. Come on down. And that person has just gained your business. All right? So three reasons why everybody needs to build their digital presence. I know it sounds self-explanatory. I know we, 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 we would like to run away from this. It was less complicated when we did not have computers and phones and all this good stuff. But boy, oh boy, right? If you were on the fence about being strategic with building your digital presence, let's change that. So the reason number one is customer expectations and behavior. Think about your own habits. When you want to purchase something that is a need for you, maybe it's a need personally or a need for your business, when that thing that you need to buy costs a good piece of change and you need to make sure you're getting the right thing, what do we do? We Google, we, we research, right? And in that research, what are some of the things we do in that research? We shop around. We shop around. Check, reviews. Check reviews, that's the big one. Check reviews. What else? Feedback. Feedback? Feedback? Yeah. yeah? Okay. That, we do all of those things. So we watch YouTube videos to see, does this make sense? We watch comparisons because maybe in our research we're seeing multiple products that solve our problems. So we watch comparison videos. We read different articles. We find experts in that space to help us come to a decision, right? Nine out of 10 times, the customer has already sold himself before they come to your business, right? So now I, I don't wanna hear what you have to say half the time. I already know what I want. Maybe there's one or two unanswered questions and you might contact the business or you go to the store and you speak to a sales rep. Hopefully they know what they're talking about, hopefully. But let's just say they do, they might have one or two pieces of missing information, but you have already sold yourself, you already know the prices, and you have the money, and now it's just to go ahead, okay, great, you answered my question, I will take that, here is my card. Or the modern customer now, not gonna call you, never gonna contact your business. All the information is online, They've watched weeks worth of content. The only thing left for them to do now is add to cart, add to cart from wherever the business is in the world, check out and wait for the delivery of said product. AKA Amazon, Walmart, Shein, it don't matter, any, any business, right? So your business in Trinidad you're no longer competing with your neighbor. You're not competing with anybody here. Your business is now competing on a global level, right? That's the modern consumer. And make it worse, right? One of my, I, I realize this is like the third time it's happened, the third year in a row. Every Christmas, somebody does a report saying, sales in Trinidad are slow. Oh. Business is slow, yeah. right? And every year I get upset because I'm like, this is just not true. It's slow for you, <laughs> right? But you know who is jumping for joy every single year? Web Source, Tropical Express, CSF, every Skybox company every year. We have been growing 10% year over year for the last 10 years. Business good. They are smiling. Why? Because everybody is shopping online. The only difference is people have shifted where they are buying. That's what's changed. 
So if you, people's buying habits, they have shifted where they're spending their money. I don't have to shop locally anymore. Matter of fact, outside of groceries, the essentials, how much of you buy, how much of you shop locally in Trinidad? Clothes, right? no clothes, right? We're busy. <laughs> now, this is always one of my favorite questions to ask, right? What time of the day do we shop online? Night. Night? Night? After closing hours. After closing hours, <laughs> right? So when your business is not online, and we like to do our retail therapy at, in the morning time, at lunch time, some of you guys have amazing jobs. Well, we're all business owners here, but some of you have had amazing jobs where you guys could just shop during work hours online. <laughs> and you still do. <laughs> and you shop. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want you to incriminate yourself. So. <laughs> There we go. There we go. There we go, right? We shopping during work. We shopping at lunch. We shopping at night. We shopping in the morning. I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. Amazon, flash sale, 2 o'clock in the morning. Damn it, they caught me again, right? That's what's happening. So now, local businesses, you open Monday to Friday. No online presence, meaning I Google, I need a new phone, and your business doesn't show up. But the international businesses are showing up. I add to cart, I order, your local business does not show up. Maybe somebody recommends you and they say, hey, before you buy online, go, go call this business. I call, I DM, you DM two weeks later, after I done received the product, after I've already received the product, I call, I call, I call, no answer. You're just losing customers, period. And in all of that, you are changing everybody's behaviors by force because people now just think, why am I going to waste my time calling these businesses for them never to answer? Why am I going to DM you, bank transfer you the money, only for you to say, well, delivery fee is $50, and you have to meet him by Grand Bazaar. I don't know if this is what happens in Trinidad and Trinidad alone. However, delivery everywhere else in the world is delivery to door. Yeah. Yeah. So what is going on? Yeah, or pickup. I don't mind pickup, right? You can't charge pickup. You can't charge your pickup. Yeah. Now people say safety. Yeah. But have we not realized that there's a new courier company popping up every other day? Yes. Why do you think we have to do deliveries? The courier companies partner with them. Everybody will easily, or TT Post, right? And you pass, you pass, you pass the cost over. Then we have some business owners and will say, well, my item is $10 and people don't want to pay $40 for a $10 item. Hello, I will. Because you might have some custom pens in San Fernando, and I'm over in Curup. I am not driving to San Fernando. I will, I'm not doing that. So I understand there is a cost associated with delivery. The item is $10, cool. I will pay the $40 because I still want the item. All right? There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, I don't know if I don't know if it's just me, but every other day we are complaining about traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so correct. Uh, we are paying to save time. Stop thinking that as a business, people are not going to want to pay the forty or fifty dollars because people are paying to save time. Any time, the difference between the wealthy people and the poor people, the wealthy people have learned to buy back their time, which is why they have chefs, which is why they have in-house keepers. I don't want to do chores. We're going to outsource that, and we're going to buy back our time so I can focus on other things, right? 
people will pay, partner with your courier companies to do that. So that's your modern customer experience. The, hey, Ald, Aldwin. Hey, quick question, right? I'm in UE training right now, and I was busy talking about color. The entire class knows you owe me 20% commission. <laughs> Forget all that. My brand. You want to have my brand? You don't need to pay me. You know, the 25% brand alignment that you need to pay me subtract the 50% commission still has you net. Do you have any math majors in your class? Or company majors? Listen, it, it, bad, bad, bad service. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna call you when I get out of here, right? All right, all right, man. All yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> That's why he's a millionaire, right? And <laughs> so, I'll give you guys this, right? Yeah. If you guys are into podcasts and you want some good podcasts to listen to, or even if you're not into podcasts but you listen to YouTube, one, I think everybody should listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk. As long as you can get past his demeanor, right, and his colorful language at times, he, he, his head is where you need to be thinking, right? Just type in Gary V. Type in Gary and then V-E-E. -E, Google that and everything will come up. And also, I'd recommend checking out a guy by the name of Neil Patel. Neil, N-E-I-L, Neil Patel. Neil Patel is, I think, the greatest marketer on the planet. While everybody's talking about emotion, 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 cool, you still have to understand how all of this stuff works to get your emotional content out. He's actually the CEO of the Answer the Public Tool. Who? Oh, I built this with Guy Ross and NPR. I haven't gone into it just yet, but I have it. I actually good. have it subscribed. He's good because he always tells his story. And he had his story about Yes. It's he's actually really good. He's actually very good. So, just a just a quick question: Did we enjoy today's session? Yes. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha,